Hi and welcome to today's Arch Capital update. Now I really wanted to update you today. Markets have continued to be quite volatile. We've seen a bit of a recovery in October. Actually, one of the best Octobers in 10 years, but no one has probably really noticed that because on the year to date, numbers aren't too good. Uh, obviously longer term, give a long term perspective, but we want to put it into, into some perspective about what's going on in the world. Uh, talks of recession on the news, all those sorts of things can make us all a bit nervous. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to show you was this slide here, which shows the market since 1926 to 2021. So what tends to happen when there's been a 10% market decline, the year after markets are up on average 12.5%, after three years up 34.5%, and after five years up 68%, 68.8%. And then when there's been market decline to 20% and 30%, we'll have this slide in the, in the, um, in the attachment as well. So there is hope when markets do fall, we know that. We know over time markets always recover to a higher level, but right now there's a bit of nervousness as we've seen this adjustment to higher interest rates. Um, one of the things we do know is the process we use, we use, as, as you all know, a very academic-based, a very uh, defined structure. And on this slide here, it talks about the performance of our, the funds that we use over a long period and actually how they have outperformed. So again, over one year, 65% of the funds that we've used over the last 20 years have outperformed, and over 20 years, 78%. And of the 22% that didn't outperform, they were sort of index funds, so they, you know, they basically got the index maybe a tiny bit under, so we're not talking about a massive difference. Now, you might look at that and go, 78% outperformed, um, that's okay, that's not too bad. But when we look at the industry average, I and mean, again, we look at this, that every fund that we've used has stayed open. None of them have closed, none of them have ever had to say we're not paying out distributions. They've all stayed open through, really, this, this, this style has been going since the early 80s. So that's a fantastic, uh, you know, for us, and we're, 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 we're quite excited about that. Um, but the industry average is that over 30, only about 34% of funds have survived in that 20 year period. So only 34% of the funds, whereas the funds we use, 100% have survived. And out of that 34%, only about 5% have outperformed. So we've got 78% outperformed outperform versus 5% as an industry average. It's actually quite amazing, and um, for all those interested, happy to go into a lot of the data around that. The next thing I want to do, I'm going to grab Josh in. Hey, Josh, you all know Josh now. Um, you might have met Josh. He might have been um, helping you out. But um, Josh is just going to help us put perspective into what's going on with inflation. So, Josh, the current inflation numbers, uh, you, you've been uh, following that pretty closely. What are we looking at now? Yeah, look, Nigel, around the world, we've seen inflation really rise, especially in the US. Uh, it's a little bit more moderate in Australia, around 6 7%. Yep. Uh, UK is really getting up there. Yep. Um, so there's some scary numbers around, but I suppose what we want to introduce here is a bit of data to show it's not the first time this has ever happened. Yeah, exactly. So do you want to just run through the chart here and what this means? Yeah, so on, on the screen here, we can see this bar chart. Uh, we'll also include it in, in the attachment. Uh, but what this is really indicating from 1970 to 1991, so uh, if anyone remembers, during the 1970 to early 1980s, uh, it was a period of massive stagflation. Uh, in this chart here, we can so compare stag stagflation. Uh, persistent high inflation over a period of time. Yep. Uh, so in this chart here, we can see inflation numbers of up to 12% um, in some periods. But what the blue lines indicate here is the return of the S&P 500. Um, and what we can see from just looking at this simple bar chart is there's no direct correlation between you know, high inflation and equity returns. Uh, but we can still expect, more often than not, uh, an equity premium even in times of high inflation. Yeah. That's great, Josh. I mean, obviously, um, when I was born back here, I don't really remember what was going on. But I remember studying all this as we came through school and university. Uh, and that was the era we, we, we had been educated around because we were coming out of the high inflation period. And obviously since that period, we've had a relatively low inflation period. So as you said at the start, Josh, this isn't that uncommon. We've seen this before. And uh, the, the equity risk premium we talk about over time uh, has per, per, you know, been uh, survived those times of high inflation as well. So uh, it's a bit scary out there. Everyone's bills are going up. But for retirees, now for non-retirees listening, not so, not so good. That we'll talk about that. But for the retirees, Josh, this is actually isn't too bad. Like recessions actually aren't that scary. And, you know, do you want to run through that? Yeah, well, I mean, your recessions can actually be a really good thing for retirees, especially for income levels. As we've seen in the last six months, return yeah. deposits in themselves have gone from next to, to yeah. 0%, yeah. Um, all the way up to, you know, nearly 4% for a, for a 12 month period. So yeah. these types of periods can be good for income levels. Um, we're seeing that through companies such as BHP paying, you know, nearly record dividends. So yeah. um, we still expect that income level to, to follow through during this period. Yeah, great. So for retirees, um, look, the news is a bit scary, but actually it isn't uh, 
Right, the outlook isn't too bad. If you're a bit younger and you've got um, time on your side, well, that's a good thing. We all know that recessions come and go. Um, but also, if you've got a lot of debt, then yes, it's a bit, 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 things aren't looking too good. So hopefully you've got that under control. The last thing I want to talk about for uh, in, the, in the budget, um, that it's, it's been a little bit missed, but the, there's a thing called the Commonwealth Seniors Healthcare Card. It's actually quite advantageous. There's quite a lot of benefits if you're sort of a, uh, one of our uh, clients who might be entitled to that. It's worth looking at because they've just increased the income threshold from around 90,000 to 144,000 for a household. So if you don't know much about that, we'll have a link in there. Please reach out, it is worth applying for. Uh, we would think a lot of people would now be able to get that card, which gives some um, particular benefits around um, uh, if, you, if you're taking medications and, and there's some other um, benefits as well. So it's certainly worth applying for. So lots to talk about at the moment. We're here to help you. Please reach out and, um, and give us a call, email, and we'll go through any specific questions. Thanks for listening.